everybody. Welcome to Double Bits Workshop. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hang it, hang it. That's my... Oh, okay, fine. joining us in today's video. This is my brother, Isaac. He'll be Older. helping me out on the channel. Older brother. You, you always gotta put that in my face. <laughs> so in today's video, we're gonna be doing a bit of a comparison for you. Um, the original techniques for taking apart pallets and such is kind of a little bit, there's a lot of different ideas on how to do it. So I wanted to present to you the two primary ideas. So one of the first ones is if you're- Using your teeth. Yeah, well, uh, oh, no, that. no. Using the... Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the primary methods is using a pry bar and a hammer. That's the main one that most everyone's kind of jumped to. And I wanted to kind of bring up an idea. So the first tool you might be looking at is you're going to want length and leverage. So the DeWalt 42 inch is pretty much like kind of king. It's $20 at Home Depot. It's pretty quick, pretty easy. You can use hammer. As you can see, I've used it quite a bit on the back end of it. And it works good. The downfalls of it is, is you do splinter and break a lot of material, and this head, even though it is a bit wider, will mar a lot of the wood. So, as much as it's one of those things that's like, it's always a question. And you're looking at the budget, you're looking at jumping into this, do you want to go in with the first method that's cheaper, will get the job done, but it takes a lot more effort and work? Or, is it going to be actually a worthwhile purchase to jump into the $60 bracket? I know that's a bit of an ouch, and it's a bit more harsh, but the beauty of it is, is this is not only a good tool, well, it's, it's a good frame. Well, it's $60. I've, I've seen some of these. Haven't they been around, like, over $200? That, that is actually one of the benefits and why I actually picked this up and thought about it a bit more. This is not not only going to be $60 versus a lot of the other tool brands are quite a bit higher. They're going to be anywhere from $70 upwards to around $250. For anything that actually has two positions to it. This is actual proper indexing. This can flex and move. I'd say the ones I've seen are just a, a, a fixed location, so it's like, mm -hmm. or a fixed point. So this one you see here that it can actually, does it only have two positions or how many? No, and this one probably has, I think, roughly around 10 or so. Oh, uh, wow. You can count on it. So depending on roughly. where your pallet is or what angle it is, you'd be able to get a better and uh, form of leverage. So that way, if you have something that's a little bit more difficult, that's what turned me on to the idea a bit more. To where this seems to be a good idea. But now for is purchase. this so this part is metal, right? So oh, 100 through. Well, I just I know some, some of the composite plastic can be, uh, <laughs> you know, it can be strong, but it's just nice to. And yeah. this is Crescent brand, so. Yeah. This is actually a name brand. You're not buying some I, odd piece of you know garbage that could have been from overseas. That's is it really? Well, steel? this is still probably overseas, but just a better. Quality this overseas. is an actual name brand that's going to have a little bit better product. Right, yes. So that's the one benefit, which is nice. You're going to have a little bit more to stand with. This does have a limited lifetime warranty. Limited being, so far as I can tell, as long as you have the receipt, you pretty much can just prove that this was purchased at a Home Depot and can return it. And so far as I can tell, it is at least the 90 days, but this may be upwards of a year. I will do a little more research and I'll probably put that in the comment section or I'll put that below. So we're going to be comparing today. $60 purchase versus a $20 purchase. Now $20 is kind of relative because most people should have a hammer, but if not, you're looking at least $25 if you're to buy like just a cheap $5 hammer or even like a $10 hammer from Harbor Freight. You're still going to be looking at around, probably let's say roughly $30. All said and done after tax. After tax this cost me $65. So the comparison between the two, this can still pull nails <laughs> and this can pull nails and they can both disassemble pallets. So you've got two of your bases covered. This requires no additional tools and it gives you a lot of leverage. This is 44 inches versus 42 inches. So it's just two inches longer, but you have indexing and a lot more fulcrums you can do with it. It isn't gonna be anything that you can hammer with, but it will be able to pull nails. So we're gonna go through. How, the do you know how much uh, it weighs? Uh, that one I'm not quite sure on. I, I think if I remember right, it was roughly around 25 pounds. So it's not super heavy. This when you uh, when you stole from that old lady, this got broken. I mean, when you bought it, this broke off. So uh, oh, oh, there it is. Oh, it might tell us. Might tell us the. the yeah, it just says 44 inches and multi-indexing head. Is all I saw. Uh, it's a dual dual claw design. 
And uh, that's meant to be able to go around two different. It's two again, by it's, it's uh, it's it's not so heavy that I'm, my arms are gonna get tired. You know, I mean, it's it definitely has weight to it because of it being a name brand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's not light. But I mean, if you're to compare the two, man, that's solid. I would say that this is probably lighter. It still is. Uh, that's yeah. actually a hollow tube. That's the second model or design for it. The original, if I remember right, is the DDX88 versus this model. I don't know if it actually shows a model number on there. This is just the bull bar that they have, but this is the second model of it. It is a hollow tube, so it gives you the capability to put a dowel rod into it to add a little extra strength if you wanted to. It has the same kind of setup as like any normal shovel or any other tool that you would have that would have an aluminum handle, wooden handle, or composite handle, where it has a single rivet through it. Mm -hmm. So, instead of having to have a hammer and this tool, one tool. So we're going to go through, do a quick comparison between the two, and see, pulling apart just probably about five pallets each, using the tried and true method, versus is it worth the $60 and a single tool method to go through. We're going to see kind of a few judging tactics here is how quickly can the project get done as far as disassembling the pallet and we're also going to see just exactly how much damage is going to happen to the pallets because the whole idea is we're salvaging, salvaging material here. So we're going to go through and see exactly how well we can disassemble a pallet and how much material we're going to be able to salvage. But no it. disassemble. Johnny says no dis. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, no, but we do want to disassemble, yes. We want to make sure that the material isn't going to be completely just garbage and just throw it away when you're done and get a few little remnants out of it. So even if we can go faster but it destroys the material, this wouldn't necessarily be worth it. If you spend a little more money but you're able to salvage a lot more out of each individual pallet, this might end up being the clear winner. So we're going to kind of do a little bit of a judging on that, plus also my brother knows tools pretty good, but he is not necessarily super versed in everything, so he's a bit more on the knobs end. So he's going to give you a bit more of a perspective on having just looked at these. He's going to run through and try out both methods and see. I'm going to pick more up a, a pair of scissors and I'm just going to run through all of it. I'm going to run through. And uh, no, I think with the, the pitchfork here, I think it's going to do well. The devil horns. <laughs> So we'll see from a bit more of a novice perspective exactly which he would prefer in the end and if it is actually worth dropping $60 on a nice brand, good brand as well to DeWalt, but something that might end up saving you a lot of time and effort and also just a lot less salvage at the end that's going to just be thrown away versus something that could be turned into the next project. So you're saying you'd be able to salvage more salvage? Well, salvaging your salvage. Right. That's a lot of salvage. Yeah, that, that's a lot of salvage. Yes, it is. So, without further ado, yes. So, we go outside now. Uh, we'll we'll take you with us as we go outside. You can see the many adventures we have of uh, destroying pal. I mean, of, uh, taking apart pallets, disassembling. <laughs> so we're gonna clip over to a time lapse and see just how many pallets we can take apart. See who is a little bit quicker with the method, and also which one is a little less tedious or a little less hard on the back. The more tedious, the better, really. I don't want anything to be easy. So we're going to go through and do a quick kind of synapse of how to use the product. So for the new tool, you have the ability to actuate and move and pivot head. Uh, the distancing between each of the claws gives you enough length for two 2x4s two next to each other. Know somebody who isn't being nice, you can deck them. So what you want to do is pry the center first, get it kind of loose, and you want to jump to each end first. Make sure to keep the foot on the pallet, so that way you're able to leverage against it without it wiggling on you. Kind of work it a little bit back and forth. What you're trying to do is salvage the wood, not break the wood. This is a task of breaking it apart. We could do that very easily, but we're trying to reclaim and make reuse the material here. So you can go from the edge of it a bit, but you're just going to want to mainly work on the 2x4 until it's pretty good, and then go back to the middle. Set that up. Perfect. Now you go to the end here, and just slowly work those tines underneath. 
you have your little catcher for the nail. You want to make sure that it's near a nail so that way it's kind of helping pull and do its job and duty. And once you get a little bit close, you can usually go through and finish with your hand, or you can go through the end as well and kind of get it if there's one nail being a little more difficult than the other. Just like people, there's always seems to be one that's a little bit more difficult than the other. And there you go. I failed! I broke part of that. That's it. That's it. So there's still going to be a few little issues and failures with the uh, pallets. This one was mainly due in part to user um, error. A mild fracture in the wood as well as a knot user nearby. Error. So we're going to go through and continue on with that process as he does it, and then I will be doing it on the other side as well. So the other process, real quick, I'll have you hop over and try that one out real quick. We'll set the boards off to the side and have a dismantle pile. And I don't know if you, if you saw it before, but the centerpiece is not adjustable. It's just the whole unit is adjustable. Which actually kind of helps with the strengthening of it as well. There's a couple different renditions that can give you the articulation inward and outward. But the downfall of the other ones is that that is just another joint that can break and it makes it a little bit more difficult. This being one solid piece is nice. If for any reason you do end up shearing the head off of this, there is still the ability to re-weld this onto something else, and it still ends up being cheaper than if you were to buy a basic weld on head version. But how it's constructed, unless you're using this as a hammer, which you shouldn't be, you know, this is this is set on there right, or set there on there good. So what you're gonna go through, you take this tool, you're going to want to leave this at a 90 degree and you're going to drop it underneath coming in a little bit from the outside of the pallet. You're going to use a hammer and tap on the back side here until these get underneath. You're going to kind of need to re-support it a little bit. This process is a little bit more fidgety. Take it Show them how it's done. <laughs> That's one, it. One thing you can do, line it up, and one gets a little bit of a groove in there, kind of apply pressure, so that way it travels forward. Now the things you'll find is that unless you're a perfect strike every single time, you have a chance, just like with this waffle head hammer from good old Harbor Freight, I drug a little bit with my stroke and I've damaged a lot of the product now that I'm trying to keep and save. So just like with the other setup. Kind of get your middle loose, rock back and forth, move over to an edge, Just kind of wiggle it a bit, and then you've got yourself a plank out. Alright, so for a little bit more of a close look at what I'm doing exactly with the pry bar here, for those of you at home that don't quite know this method exactly, when you butt this up against it and you hit, it can bounce back, which is fine for the first stroke at least. If it doesn't quite exactly snag and it bounces back on you, what you can do is just get your teeth under it a little bit, push in, and just apply a little bit of back pressure with the top of your hand at the top of the pole. And then it'll start biting in just fine. Couple hits, hold your foot and just kind of rock it back and forth. You're using the leverage of the tool so that way you're not going to wear yourself out. Because if you go at this super hard in a ham, you're going to end up usually tiring yourself out before you get through the first pallet. You're going to start making mistakes. Then you're going to have to go scour the town again for yet again more pallets. So, continue one more time. Or, or when you get them free from your business, it's not that, or for where you work at. <laughs> yeah, true. So when you do this, start at one end, go across, or you start in the middle, depending on where the knots are. So this one has a pretty bad knot on one end, so what I'm having to do is work where that knot is at first, because it's the most delicate. If I wanted to keep that for the look of the wood, and not splitting the wood, I have to work around the defects in the pallet. Kind of wiggle your arm, pop up again. Keeping your foot, you can work it on the bottom part of the pallet to help secure it. back. When it's almost done, you just kind of grab your hand, rotate and pop, and you've got yourself a face plate out. So that is 
the original method and what I started with to begin with. Okay, now you've seen the uh, little more cumbersome way of using the, the dual uh, pry bar with the hammer. Uh, now I get to you, show you the easy way. Uh, uh, so here we go. You want to start on uh, the end of the pallet here, uh, getting this just gingerly under here. Okay, you might little talk to a little bit. Good afternoon, good evening, how are you? Okay, you don't want to break the wood as you can hear it starting to snap and you change your angle. Get on up under here. Just a little bit, Mr. Pallet. And if that's, uh, and again, if that's starting to not go as easy, you can move on, just do a little bit of uh, encouragement. Come on now, come on. Oh, Pepsi. Okay, and then if that's gonna go a little bit, just gonna go where the wood takes you. Let the spirit move you and kind of see. There we go, oh, look at that, see? Now we don't want the, we don't want, up, 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 up. Here it is, up, up. Sometimes, as nice as you, uh, as nice as you are to the wood, it uh, still wants to do what it's going to do. Can't quite save every single piece of pallet wood. You're going to have a few casualties here and there, and that's just kind of the nature of it. There's a few little hairline cracks you're not always going to see right off. But the overall, bat. I would say that that's uh, not bad. And honestly, I'm taking a little bit extra time to show you how it's done. Uh, you know, it depends on how much wood you want to save. Uh, but with this tool, you know, you can just, you can pretty much fly through it, you know, depending on what you want to, how much you want to save. But see, I went a little faster, and then of course you're going to have things like that. Meanwhile, my brother's going, don't destroy the wood! But, uh, no. So, uh. It's not bad, it's not a bad tool. So uh, I think in the end what you want to do is uh, just go out and buy this. 60 bucks, a little bit more expensive than the uh, pry bar, but it's gonna save time and it's gonna save your back. And you have to smash the hammer and be loud. You'll fly through 20, 30 pallets, no problem. All right, so we're gonna use a method real quick that's a little bit more tried and true to what I've used in a prior video that I had for my disassembling pallet video. Uh, this one requires an extra tool, a circular saw, so if you don't have one, this isn't necessarily going to be the best idea for you. If you don't have one though, I would suggest getting one. This does work in the best favor to save the most material. So regardless if you're using the gooseneck or if you are using the bull bar by uh, Crescent, this will work the most across the board, easy, get the job done, and it'll save you the most time. So I'm going to run through this pallet, and then I'm going to run through this pallet, and we're going to go through and do both of our methods again, so that way you can kind of see a comparison between the two. All right, so real quick, just quick safety, and kind of the way that I approach it. So on the tool itself, secure three fingers, and pull the safety forward. The reason we're doing this is when you're hooking through and cutting your first piece of material, on your second piece, this piece will have a tendency to sometimes pull in, and bind on the blade. The blade is fine with that and it can bind a little bit, but if your safety or your safety guard here is down, it'll sometimes hook the next plank and it'll actually cause a more serious bind. And depending on what circular saw you're using, it has a higher risk of kickback. And if you don't have guard or anything on there, that's not gonna be as much of an issue. But otherwise, even if you are trying to be safe, it can cause more of a hindrance and more of a negative effect rather than a positive effect. So running through, cutting, make sure to always line up on the side, interior. Don't get too close to the nails as well, because you're wanting to save the 2x4, but also you don't want to get too close to the nails, because that'll cause even more of an issue. So making your first cut, make sure your line is a little bit in. Make sure you give yourself like eighth of an inch to a quarter inch on the inside of the actual stringer, so that way you're not going to have any real issues. And as you heard, it still tried to bind pulling those two together and made that little pop noise. So you can continue on making each of your cuts, but that's why I kind of run through that method. And then I also still have a little bit of 
room so I'm not cutting into my essential stringer or two by four and I'm saving wood and then all I have to do is run through the center. So I'll cut both ends of these on both of them and then we'll try both methods and give you kind of a final synapse here. So we did a couple different examples and tests back and forth. I know this isn't the most absolute thorough, like down to an absolute scientific fact on it, but this is just some world, real world examples. This isn't thorough. What, what, did, what didn't we cover? <laughs> That's true. All right. So this is some more real world examples on the applications between the two tools. As you can see, they're pretty much close to about the same size. So you get the same leverage for the same it. size. I'm bigger than you. <laughs> oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, now I am. Now I am. Oh, there you go. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. But this has the nice added benefit of the indexing capability as shown just now. And you can still pull nails with it. It has multiple facets and uses past just working with pallets. So it isn't just going to be a one trick pony for a tool. It'll actually still end up having the ability to come in clutch for one or two other applications. Like I said, this originally is also utilized mainly for deck pulling. So if you're demoing or if you're trying to go through and reclaim a deck, off of a property or you're just trying to reconfigure it and save money, this is also a great tool for you. Uh, this tool on the other hand can do all that same facets and whatnot. Alright, so a few of the downfalls of the gooseneck versus the other tool is not only did we have a couple things to do with weight, this one is just ever so slightly heavier than the bull bar, but this one also requires a secondary tool. Now, a hammer is inexpensive, but we'll say that that increases the budget of this one past $20 if you don't have a hammer to around 30 for just even a basic or kind of good one from Harbor Freight. Now, I'm, I'm not knocking Harbor Freight in any regard. I have quite a few of their hammers, so trust me, I do enjoy their product, but just keep that in mind. You can buy this, but you'll still need a hammer to properly use it. The other tool, on the other hand, that bull bar doesn't need it whatsoever. It'll get you, it'll just get right up underneath there and just take it right out. Yeah, I'll tell you what, <clears throat> yep, I think we've explained it, he's explained it pretty well, especially with this, uh, you know, being able to adjust, you know, uh, and, and as, as he even showed me there at the end, you know, being able to uh, have it go this low, you're able to get that leverage up underneath that and pry that real easy. And, I mean, having the, the nail puller is, uh, <clears throat> is uh, extremely useful. Um, and, uh, but if, uh, I know these are inanimate objects, but that they were alive, it always just sounds to me like this, this tool is scared, like, no, oh, no, don't use me on the pallet, no. Yeah, that's just my, that's my, uh, my two cents. I think, uh, I think it's a good tool and I'd run out and buy it now. Why aren't you, why are you, you should be running out and buying it now. Although if you're watching this late at night, I understand, you should probably buy it first thing in the morning. And that is the one other benefit to this one, is you have that ability. Uh, this one as well, are both right next to each other on the shelf at good old Home Depot. Uh, this one being the $20 tool, this one being the $60 tool. After tax, this one's a little bit closer to $25. This one is at $65, at least for my local area for our tax. But now wait, if I wanted to buy this on Amazon, is it available on Amazon? Uh, it's actually funny you mentioned that. I did look it up, and it is one to two months for this to actually be shipped to me. So I am saying for the moment, huh. at least right now when I went to go purchase this, I was looking at Amazon because I'm a deal chaser. I will always look and see if it's going to save me about 10 to 15 bucks, I'll order it online. This tool, actually, no, exact same price, and I don't have to wait two months. I literally was standing there and just grabbed it and was like, well, that made my decision when purchased it. And it's nice because if there's any defaults or like any kind of faulty 
design or breaking it at all that for whatever reason is a manufacturer defect, I can go and replace it that same day at my local Home Depot. And it just right there readily available for you. So it kind of makes it a little bit easier to look between at least this tool, that tool, and just kind of some basics around that. But between the two, it's kind of up to you. This one is going to be a bit more budget friendly, but you're going to damage a bit more material to get what you want out of this tool to do what you need, but you're saving money. Spending time, you can be a little bit slower, take a little bit more time to finesse each one of those boards off of the pallet, but you got to kind of budget it a little bit. That one on the other hand, you are dropping $60, but you save a lot more of the material and you save a lot more time. So it kind of makes it, it's ultimately up to you. I'm not forcing your hand in one direction or the other, but those are at least some of the things to kind of look at and kind of weigh your options on. And like I said, you do need a hammer, so just plan for about 30 bucks with this one if you don't have one. That tool, $60, said and done, or 65 after tax. Or there's the circular saw method, which as you saw is, is the cleanest and it's gonna, you're gonna save the most amount of wood. So, but uh, you know, not everybody can get a uh, cordless circular Dewalt saw for Christmas. So, you know, <laughs> it's, it all depends. So, if you were to go and pick one up, they are gonna run, roughly run you around at least fifteen dollars if you buy a super cheap one to around twenty-five to thirty bucks. Wait, on that, that wouldn't be a, a cordless for fifteen. No, th this would be a corded one. A corded, yeah. So, so a corded if you're just one the around basic thirty. Corded, and then yeah. what, uh, uh, probably what, around 80 for a cheaper cordless? If you wanted a cheaper heart brand, I think they run you around 60 to $80 is what there they're shooting go. for right 60 now. 60 to 80. And that's if you have the battery. And that's in, the uh, uh, you know, April of 2021 dollars. So if you're yeah. watching this 10 years from now, it might be a different price. Uh, well, probably. probably. <laughs> Hopefully by then, wood is a bit cheaper. My goodness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see, but then again, that's why we're all here, isn't it? Uh, wood's gotten so expensive, it's a heck of a lot easier to break down some pallets and just Ooh. work it that way. Cheese and cheese. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. If you haven't already, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell as well, so that way you're up to date on every little bit of information that we have out there. This has been our double bit of information. Thank you so very much.